Thank you very much for joining us. Let's talk first of all about this uh, financial regulation bill. Um, Paul Volcker himself saying that it has been watered down. Uh, is it a shadow of its former self? Well, it's a shadow of what Paul Volcker would have liked to have seen, but I don't think that his view was ever going to be the one that Congress implemented. Mm. Um, but yeah, the lack of discipline around this piece of legislation is extraordinary. Basically, the view has been that uh, because Senator Dodd is retiring, mm. uh, that anybody can throw anything they want to into this legislation. So it has lots of conflicting elements. and. What is important is traders think it constitutes the end of the re-regulation of the financial markets. And I think it's the opposite. It constitutes the beginning of mm. a process. And this process is much bigger than legislation. I personally am keeping an eye on uh, Andrew Cuomo, the mm -hmm. New York State prosecutor. Because he's running for the governorship of New York now. And so I think it's pretty likely he's going to go after financial institutions, financial practices. And this is what we see in every kind of recrimination phase of the economic cycle. Mm -hmm. It's not just what the legislature wants to do. It's also what does the public see? So if there are arrests, if there are announcement of criminal, civil prosecutions, then everyone will say we need more legislation. You see, or we yeah. need more rules. So this iterative process is what we're in now, and I think it lasts a few years. Yeah, I know you're talking about conflicts within the bill. What do you think of the bill itself as it stands? Is it a good piece of law? Uh, no, I don't think it is a great piece of law, and everything that gets passed in a hurry mm. and in an emotional frenzy is never a good piece of law. Um, but that's the nature of the legislative process. Now, we're looking at uh, going to the Senate now and uh, talk that it may be watered down even further. There is concern that Republicans, who've already been appeased quite a lot to accept the bill, will need some more persuasion. Is that likely? Well, I think, look, we're coming into the elections, mm -hmm. November. So fundraising is currently at its peak. And so who do we think uh, is suggesting they could write bigger checks if the bill was not so stringent? You know, you don't have to add this up very easily. I mean, it's, it's part of the American process. So yeah, a lot of the banks are going to go to the congressmen and senators that they think they can get to and say, if you do this, the financial system will implode. Right. Now let's move on to uh, look at Europe. We've had the, uh, this idea of stress tests for banks. Again, is that something that you think is going to give enough transparency to give investors confidence? I don't think so. Um, and I think there are lots of questions about what is the nature of the stress test that will be conducted. I think there were questions in the U.S. And the Federal Reserve had to work pretty hard to make sure that the stress tests were applied in a consistent way. I think in Europe there's a general lack of confidence as to what the quality of the test will be, let alone the quality of the data that ensues from it. Um, I also think that the market knows one way or another what the debt picture is and mm. who owns the bonds. And therefore this risk of default remains the critical pressure and the markets are going to continue to price for that. Now we did see uh, a little bit of comfort uh, when the ECB talked about interbank lending um, and that it is more free flowing now but there is a major concern isn't there with banks lending to each other because of the sovereign debt risks in, and the risk of default for example in Greece. Absolutely no question and um, I have to say I personally think that the only solution to the magnitude of this debt problem mm. is default. Uh, but default can happen in lots of different ways. You know, some countries may choose to find ways to inflate their way out of it. That's one version of default. Mm. Some may do haircuts on the bonds. Some may de go to print their own currency again. But in the end, I think what we do know is the trillion euro announcement the Europeans made tells us they won't permit the major banks in Western Europe to fail. Yeah. So. You talk about uh, printing their own currency again. Can you see some of those uh, siesta states leaving the euro? Uh, personally, I mm. absolutely can. And I think it all comes down to the simple fact. The last debt payment that the Greek public will owe under kind of the current rules of the game will be 2050. I just don't think that the human factor can withstand mm. that kind of pain for that long. That's two generations, isn't it? I wouldn't mm -hmm. be giving up my child's future. Mm. For, for a debt problem. Just before we go, let, I want to ask you about bank taxes. Um, yes. Across the board, uh, they seem to be fairly irregular. Is that going to create an, un, an unlevel? Is that the right word? Oh, I think this is the thing to watch. Mm. I always tell all the traders, forget the legislation. This is the most important thing. Tax is the most important thing. Because the shutdown of tax havens, the requirement now that if you want privacy protection, you have to be resident of yes. Switzerland. It's not enough to have your money in Switzerland. 
the closing down of tax loopholes, the raising of taxes you've mentioned earlier on your program. This will profoundly change the landscape because when you do a derivative transaction or any kind of financial deal, you only really have two questions. First, what's the risk my client wants to achieve? And second, what's the tax situation? So tax will be a huge driver. Pippa Melgan, thank you very much.